Hey there, welcome to OneWordBytes.com. In this video, we are going to see what is LDAP Authentication Provider. In the last video, we have we have seen what is Default Authentication Provider, uh, what is Embedded LDAP, and how to view the how to view the users and groups from the Embedded LDAP through JXplorer. How to make a user to be a part of an admin group all those things we have seen as we know that in a big enterprises that the users will be stored mostly in an lab or database which is outside of some web logic and you may have already like thousands of users in the in your lab and it is not an easy task to migrate all all those users and groups to the web logics uh, embedded lab these are use web logic has come up with a feature called an authentication providers so there are multiple there are various authentication providers like LDAP authentication provider, database authentication provider, SAML authentication provider. So there are few there are various authentication providers are there. So we can use as per our need. So in a web logic, you will provide all the details for to require to log into your external LDAP and retrieve the users and groups. Whenever the user log into this admin console or or application deployed in the web logic, it will send the user it will delegate this authentication to the external LDAP and uh, the next one will perform the authentication and return the results based on the results and uh, policies in the weblogy server um, the authentication will go on so let's see uh, let's get into practical like how to create the ldap authentication provider so for this you need a server web server has to be uh, running so i i started the server and i logged into the admin console so like go to the security realms and my realm providers and click new provider so i'm going to create an ldap authentication provider ldap atn so well, on type of the authentication will be is an ldap authentication provider so you can have an ldap authenticator and click ok uh, we just created an LDAP authenticator, uh, but we need to provide the details of your LDAP authenticator uh, in a provider specific tab. So just uh, click the LDAP ATN and provider specific. So this is host is your where your LDAP will be running and port and what is an admin user or what are the user you want to to log into your external external LDAP and the credentials. Okay, from the user base DN from the which base uh, you want to search it or the user filter. Yeah, name filter and the search uh, search scope whether it's subtree or one level and what is the username attribute whether it's uid or uh, cn and depending on the object class and similarly for the and similarly for the group uh, groups group based in groups filter name filter search scope membership searching whether it is unlimited or it's a limited and uh, that and if it is limited or you can put a search level uh, and uh, some static groups dynamic groups uh, and uh, what is the connection pool size like how much time uh, time what will be and read how many times you need to retry all those things you can configure it even for caching also so whenever if you do any changes you have to save it once you save it you need to restart the server okay so uh, now in this case i have an um, oracle internet directory is running in my in my in my external machine i'm going to configure those things uh, i have entered all the details which is required to connect to my ldap server and um, i have i have entered all those details to for the user uh, search base or group base and everything i have entered it this is a set of configuration which you, which is required to access your external LDAP. I'll post this configuration details in the 100 bytes tutorial page uh, where, you, where you need to suppose if you if you are having the same Oracle internet directory you can just copy paste this into, into your config, web logic configuration file and, uh, and, and and start the restart the server so that you can able to access this one and I also I'll tell you where you can find the configuration file in the web uh, in the web logic server you you just need to go to the domain home and the config there's one file called config.xml you just need to open it 
So once you open the uh, configured XML in the in the first of the configured in, in the first part of the configured XML, you can fry it, you can see the all the authenticator authentication providers. In our case, is an LDAP it, LDAP authenticator. So uh, if you if you don't provide anything in the provider specific tab, and you may you will see only these three lines actually. Uh, name and control flag and start and uh, I mean start and end of an authentication provider uh, tag and just in ignore this credentials uh, credential tag uh, because your because the padding mechanism in your uh, in your web browser and my web browser will differ uh, so so for this you just paste it and save it and restart the server once you restart the server and go to the same LDAP authentication provider uh, when the provider specific you will find the credentials will not be entered so you just need to enter the credential and save it and after that you, you are ready to use the LDAP authenticator. So once you configured in the provider specific tab to tab to access your external LDAP, and now you need to change the your control flag depending upon your need. So uh, like required request is sufficient and optional. Uh, like what if you if you change anything, you need to save it and restart the server. I'm sticking into the uh, default one as an optional. Okay, let's try to access the users and groups in the LDAP. Users and groups tab will list all your users and groups uh, from your uh, from your authenticators. Let's say if you are configured a more than uh, like a four or five authenticators authenticator providers, and it'll it'll try to list all your users and groups from your uh, from from the configured authenticator providers. If there is any issue in your one of your authenticator providers, and uh, the the error will not be shown here, but you can see it in the admin console. So in our case, we just uh, we configured only LDAP ATN. So it uh, and in addition to the default authenticator, so it listing all your uh, you all your users actually. And I have the groups also. It can be you can view it from you can view it in this tab. So this is the LDAP ATN and the groups are there, and the groups memberships. So so if, if it is any groups it is part of it you can see it actually and you can also see the users member users groups membership also so let's say you can see that he is uh, that 100 bytes uh, user is a part of uh, these three groups so this all these things will be pulled out from the next LDAP you need to notice that there is no option to delete it or you can there is no option to uh, uh, edit this user when it is configured to an LDAP. We created that LDAP authenticator provider. Similarly, we can able to uh, do an OID authenticator provider that is Oracle Internet Directory authenticator provider. Uh, so one advantage with that does like there is no, no need to change any configurations. Uh, just see, let's see like how it is actually. So in the providers, uh, create new. So OID authenticator providers, you have to select the type of the authenticator provider. So it is Oracle Internet Directory authenticator authenticator provider. Click OK. And in the provider specific. So uh, all your search user base and all this is by default whatever it is required for your uh, Oracle Internet Directory will be configured. Maybe you can able to maybe you can uh, change this user base DN and uh, what are the search scope and the group base DN. So and uh, your as usual your host name uh, port and the principles. So this is one advantage like uh, like if you are using OID you need you no need to change it, uh, all other things. But it is very. Uh, but if you are using an other than Oracle Internet Directory, uh, you need to change your uh, change the user specific and group specific uh, details. We have configured an LDAP authenticator to access the users and groups from the external LDAP. Let's try to use the one of the users from the external LDAP to log into an ap application which I have already deployed. Uh, I have deployed an application called an auth project which is a simple web application which has only an index page uh, so to access the index page you need to be an authenticator uh, I'm using a form based authentication where you can see here like for all the URLs uh, so you, you need to be part of a test role and test role is a role name and uh, and the users assigned to the test role is uh, which is uh, is a 100 base user i will explain all this form based authentication and how to use it along with the blog server in a different tutorial uh, let's stick to the ldap authentication tutorial as of now uh, i'm opening a new private window so i'm going to access this uh, application 
so our project yeah challenge the username password so we have config for 100 bits user and password yeah success now it's if we have access the protected resource by authenticating so in the background what weblog server will do means like it will uh, dip, uh, it will you it will send uh, your username and password uh, i mean basically credentials to the all the authenticators which we have configured in our case we have configured uh, we have two authenticator providers one is default authenticator and LDAP, LDAP authenticator so weblog server will send uh, will send this username password to the all the authenticator providers and uh, and this depending upon this control flag that the optional sufficient required and requesting authentication will be succeeded that's all about that LDAP authenticator providers in the next video see about the database authenticator providers visit 100bytes.com for more tutorials thanks for watching this video